Welcome to People in Profit. This week we're looking at the economic promises being made by candidates in France's presidential election. Coming up. What sort of economy do the presidential hopefuls want to create? We'll look at their proposals on the cost of living, tax and jobs. France's government debt soared to a record high during the pandemic, so why isn't it a bigger issue in the campaign? And we'll discuss the larger financial picture facing the next president. Now, the French election campaign is unfolding at a time when consumer prices are soaring. The war in Ukraine has driven already high energy prices up even further, with fears over the security of oil and gas supplies from Russia. Opinion polls say that the cost of living is the biggest issue for French voters. Let's delve into how the candidates are promising to tackle this issue. Kate Moody joins me in studio. Kate, there are 12 candidates in this race. You've been focusing on the top six in the polls. What are they promising to do about the cost of living? Well, there are two broad ways of tackling that issue, Stephen, either by trying to control the price of goods or taxes or by boosting spending power with higher salaries. Most of the candidates are promising a mix. As president, Emmanuel Macron has capped price increases for electricity and gas bills and offered an energy subsidy for the most vulnerable. As a candidate, he says he would lower taxes for both households and businesses and triple the limit of a tax-free bonus that employers can offer low-paid workers. The conservative Valérie Pécresse has vowed to increase private sector salaries by 10 percent over a five-year term, partly by lowering pension contributions to boost spending power. On the far right, Marine Le Pen says she would lower VAT on petrol from 20 to 5.5 per cent and temporarily get rid of sales tax on about 100 essential goods. Eric Zemmour's platform seeks to raise the lowest salaries by reducing their tax contributions. On the other side of the political spectrum, the far left Jean-Luc Mélenchon says he would raise the minimum wage to €1,400 per month and freeze the price of essential goods, including petrol. The Green Party's Yannick Jadot has targeted a €1,500 minimum wage and more generous energy subsidies. What then about the labour market? What are the candidates promising to do about jobs? Well, this is usually a pretty big issue on the campaign trail. Uh, less so this year because at the end of 2021, the unemployment rate hit its lowest level since 2008. Both Macron and Mélenchon are campaigning with the promise of full employment, but with different ways of getting there. The far-left candidate says he would create millions of jobs by stimulating demand and investing in the green transition. Macron would focus on continuing to reform France's unemployment and welfare systems. Pécresse also wants to reform the unemployment system with the goal of reducing benefits after six months. Jadot, on the other hand, would roll back some of the current government's reforms and create jobs by expanding environmentally friendly industries. Both of the far-right candidates want to prioritize employment for French citizens. Zemmour has suggested deporting foreigners who are out of work for more than six months at a time. Le Pen says that she would require any companies receiving state aid to guarantee a certain level of job creation. What about then the issue of taxes? Well, one of the more unusual proposals has come from Marine Le Pen. Uh, she has suggested that she would exempt French workers under the age of 30 from paying income tax. She says it would encourage young workers not to leave the country and boost their purchasing power. Jean-Luc Mélenchon also wants a pretty major revamp of the tax system. He wants to go from the current five income tax brackets to 14 and push the rate for top earners significantly higher. Jadot also suggests a similar overhaul to 13 tax brackets. Both Zemmour and Pécresse would exempt overtime from income tax. Her platform also outlines tax breaks for entrepreneurs investing in small and medium-sized towns. Macron has promised a further 15 billion euros worth of tax cuts for both households and businesses if he's re-elected. Inheritance tax is another hot topic on the campaign trail. Mélenchon and Jadot say they would increase the levy on the most well-off, while the other four top candidates are seeking to further ease that tax burden. OK, Kate Moody, thank you very much for that roundup. Now, one subject that has dominated previous elections in France is largely absent from this year's campaign. The French government debt and deficit have exploded during the past two years as the government spent more than €100 billion Euros on emergency measures during the pandemic. 
The most recent figures show that at the end of 2021, the national debt was the equivalent of 113% of France's GDP, while the budget deficit was 6.5%. Both of those figures much higher than in 2019. Despite this, for voters, government debt ranked only ninth on a list of concerns in this campaign. I'm joined in studio now by Rafael Gallardo, who's the chief economist with the asset managers, Carmignac. Thank you very much for coming in to us. Thank you for having me. Um, why do you think it is that we're not hearing more about the debt, the government debt in this campaign? Um, well, I think there are two things that have changed the way politicians and the electorate is uh, uh, approaching this subject. I think... Uh, uh, twice in our recent history, we've had some eminent policymakers using the word whatever it takes or whatever it costs. Uh, the first one was Mr. Draghi in 2012, when basically he started using the ECB as a printing machine and buying government debt. So he was kind of removing the solvency constraint on the budget of the bad pupils uh, mm -hmm. in Europe. And then, of course, in 2020, uh, because of the pandemic, um, there was this, the same phrase used by Mr. Macron, President Macron. Um, and so, and it worked basically because we were in ex exceptional circumstances. Uh, but now it seemed that this idea of the magic money falling from the sky with no consequences um, is kind of sticking. Uh, and I think our policymakers should insist more <laughs> uh, and prepare the public opinion that uh, the period of easy money uh, will come to an end. So they shouldn't be making these massive promises because we were just hearing about some of them there and, you know, the price tags being put on them by uh, other economists. Are, you know, we're talking about 20 billion euro for one measure, 10 billion for another. These are big sums of money. And, and how much, in the, given the current finances of the government, how much space will the next president have to spend, whoever it is? Well, well the first thing is, to be fair, uh, when you look at the programmes, officially, they are, most of the programmes are self-financing. And even in the, the manifesto of Mrs. Pécresse, uh, she's saying we will improve public finances. But she's the only one. Uh, for the other, most of them are saying we're going to spend more, but we are going to extract more revenue for the government from other sources. So the question is more the credibility um, of uh, these new sources of revenue and the efficiency of the increased spending uh, they are planning to do. And here, of course, uh, they rely um, a lot on some kind of dubious measures, like doing some savings, some cost savings in the, uh, the way the state is managed, um, extracting more money from uh, tax fraud, uh, fighting and st stuff like this, which can, which can be debatable how much it will yield. So we should be a bit prudent, perhaps, about some of those those financial promises. Absolutely. We know the cost of living is the big issue in this campaign. What do you make of what the, the candidates are promising in terms of doing things like, for example, cutting VAT on electricity or energy products? Is that going to help consumers? It will help consumers by definition, but I think it's, uh, it's also kind of a dangerous measure because... Uh, we consider that the rise uh, in energy prices is not a one-off because we have a temporary problem in our supply. Um, I think it's a structural increase in prices like it was in 1973. So if you subsidize demand by pretending for consumers that prices have not gone up, that we're not paying more to import fuel from Russia or Qatar or any other country, we are not educating people to say, yes, energy price is going to be more expensive for a long time. So the purpose of higher prices is to create demand destruction. So we should be accepting that there has to be demand destruction, while at the same time we put in place some measure to improve our supply of alternative energies. And right now, uh, purchasing power is an obsession. So politicians are saying, we're going to subsidize your demand but they're not tackling, I think, enough the supply problem. So what sort of promises would you, would you like to be seeing from the candidates in terms of that supply side? Well, I think that there has to be a recognition uh, that, it's, that it is uh, a structural issue um, and so that we're not going to subsidize forever um, and that we need to find some other ways, some more, more sustainable ways. Um, and, and clearly this loops back to the question about the energy transition. Um, so, of course, this is something that will be better debated at the European level, and we're talking about the national elections. But even though I think the candidates are not very clear on what they would argue and what would be the policy they would propose uh, to Europe uh, in this regard. Lots of the candidates talking about taxes and how they're going to change the income tax system and impose new bans or, or less bans. What does that mean for, for the economy in general? 
Well, I think it is what we call uh, in our jargon of economists, the Keynesian measure. Uh, we're going to uh, boost demand uh, because we are going to return more money, uh, post-tax money, to low-income households. Uh, and we were going to take money from higher income mm -hmm. people. Um, and of course, uh, people that are from the lower income deciles have a propensity to spend that is higher from the people at the top. So it would increase demand. Um, and to be fair, this is an election. <laughs> so <laughs> politicians are always going to do that. Um, but clearly, I think more structurally, um, the problem we face in France from an economic standpoint is not a deficiency of demand. It's a deficiency and an inadequacy of supply. So here too, um, we don't find what we would like to see in this kind of uh, um, intentions. Okay, uh, Rafael Gaudio from Carminac, thank you very much for coming in to speak to us. Thank you very much. Well, that's all from us and from me. This is my last time presenting this programme. Kate Moody will be here with you from next week. From me, thank you to all of the guests who shared their stories and expertise with us over the past six years. Thank you to our producer, Farah Boucherak, and all the technical and production teams that get this show on air every week. And thank you to you for watching. This is France 24. Stay with us. A programme about women who are reshaping our world. We meet those who seek equality, be it in the boardroom or at the village well. The 51% brings you stories from across the globe about the women who are challenging the way we think. The 51% presented by Annette Young on France 24 and France24.com.